I gotta bring this up. So when we were, uh, uh, when, when I was out there at Harris County, uh, a lot of times people, before I speak, they'll do an introduction. And the one thing that, uh, they'll say, do you have a bio? I'm like, yeah, I do. But please, whatever you do, do not read it. Don't read it. Nobody cares about the accolades or anything that, you know, and it's not like I have any, but you know, like I, like, you know, and a lot of times somebody's not going to be like, if you're a terrible speaker, like, well, they went to Harvard and said their introduction. So like in my mind, I'll make it better. Right. So like <laughs> nobody cares. So I always say like, you know, make it personal. Yeah. And you did such an amazing job. And I was like, wow, like this guy like dug into my stuff to do this introduction. And what I, what I loved about it, and I think was really powerful for me, was you didn't just like say, hey, George talked about this and connected. You, you did, you actually, you, you t like, you made me feel very welcome for one, which yeah. is beautiful. Um, you really connected to your own personal life. And then you connected it to where you want to go in Harris County. And I thought it was yeah. so masterful the way you did it. And then like, like, you're so good. I'm like, I don't want to speak with this guy. Keep talking. <laughs> this guy's really good. I want to, I want to see more from him. Right. And so it was like, it was really, yeah. it, it was really powerful. So like, can you like talk about like, you know, why you did it that way? And you know, yeah. like I, and what I, I'm going to do, I'm going to probably clip this out and then I'm going to yeah. say, Hey, if you're doing an introduction, watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Right, watch what this guy says and why he did it the yeah. way he did it because you know that would be really helpful probably to some groups because i think it helps me to bridge like the one of the things i talk about when i go into districts help me bridge your vision to the stuff that i'm talking about so we're not like in two different orbits right like i'm trying to connect the two and let, let me connect to your vision so that people aren't feeling this is like hey i got to do this thing that harris county says and this thing it's like no 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 they're they're actually they're very well interconnected and you made it super easy for me to do it that day because of the way um you you connected my work to yours but you did it on a personal level and a professional level so like tell me like your thinking behind like how you you went about that process yeah i mean I, you you have spoke at tasa midwinter which is like yep. a big conference here in texas right and so my team came back and they were like, look, we need to get this guy, right? And so, you know, before normally, I, before I say yes, I'm like, okay, let me do some homework, right? Right. And so, you know, I started listening to, you know, Google you, you know, I'm not big on social media yet, right? Right. Uh, but I After started, this you know, podcast, you will be. I know, I know. I started, I, <laughs> I started listening to, you know, some of your stuff, man. And I was like, man, this guy, like, yes, yes, that's it. Like that. <laughs> That's exactly what we need to be talking about. Um, and then I got to a podcast where you were being very vulnerable. Yeah. Um, and you talked about your move. Um, and that really resonated with me because we were shifting sort of gears here at Harris County. Um, and I was like, man, like that, that's, that's it right there. That, that's, that's kind of, it's something that, and, and it wasn't, I mean, it was, it was a content, but it was your delivery too, George. Like you were, you were just and, and man, and, and it connected with me, right? And I've been talking a lot recently, you know, about connection. Like I need to do a better job about connecting with people and making people feel um, feel at home, feel feel personal, especially during tough times, right? Uh, and so it it was that podcast, and so I was like, man. He's talking about innovators mindset. I completely agree with that. Like throughout my career, I've, I've tried to demonstrate that. Uh, and I was like, man, this guy has put it in a framework like that. It's perfect how he, you know, explained it. Um, and I was like, man, it'd be great if I just demonstrated that. Like what, what's mm -hmm. the best totally. form of, you know, a flattery is, you know, like mastery of your content. Right? right. And so, you know, I was like, man, when, when have I, you know, and, and, and what you talked about was, you know, initiating change, right? Like if you want change to happen, it, it, change is better when you initiate it, right? Totally. Or easier. Understand. Um, Way easier. And, yeah. And then you talked about going from, you know, a comfortable average to a better unknown, right? And I was like, man, that's what we're trying to do. And I was like, okay, let me think back to my life where that has happened. That's not right now, right? Hmm. And I just started thinking and I was like, man, that's when my kids were born, right? Like who, who is like, yeah, I want all the pain that goes with being a parent. <laughs> right. But yeah. Everybody is like, yeah, I want all the pain that goes along with being a parent. Right. right? And it's like, man, 
So I was like, let me figure out how to shake this and set this up. And it was one thing you said on your podcast is like, you know, I go to these districts and I can tell when, you know, they're just trying to fill time. I was like, that is not going to be me. Like, right. we will not be a time filler. Like, we're going to maximize because what he has to say, everybody needs to hear it. And I need to make sure that I do a good enough job of setting the table so that you feel comfortable, right? But then yeah. also, people are ready to listen to what you are about to deliver. You know, and yeah. I, I even said it during that time. I said, look, George is going to drop some nuggets here for us today. <laughs> One of the things I really admire about what, how, what you're doing on TikTok and how you're sharing stuff, I, I feel you're sharing stuff you're passionate about and you're interested in and that that actually attracts an audience of I may, I, mean, I don't want to maybe sound offensive. It's not going to attract as big an audience. If you're maybe like dancing or doing ridiculous stunts, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like a big, like, Hey, let's learn about literacy. TikTok. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Oh, I, I fell on literacy TikTok today. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that, that to me is, I, I feel like, you still get like thousands of likes on stuff that you're sharing, which I, you know, is to me, I, I think we kind of take this for granted. Like I grew up in a town of 5,000 people total. Right. And it's not like I could, and just think that people get like hundreds of thousands of views and likes on stuff. I'm like, that's yeah. like, you know, my, I grew up in a town of 5,000 people. And so one of the things that I think is really important to me is how do we actually help our students create stuff they're passionate about and that mm -hmm. is true to them, not create stuff that they think other people want to see. And it actually takes away from who they are. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's really easy to kind of get caught up in like, Oh, here's the fad. Let's jump into it because I know this will get me likes. Mm -hmm. Right. So this won't get me a bunch as many likes, but this is something that I'm passionate about. Right. Like I talk about, I talk a lot about the same things I talked about years ago because I'm really passionate about this stuff, right? I'm not trying to like trend chase. So how do you how do you deal with that? Yeah, I when I make my TikToks, I you know, it would be really easy I think to use the music or do the same right. trend or whatever and I've really tried to stay away from that because I feel like it takes away from what I'm trying to say and I'm just trying to be of use to teachers and if they're like me, they don't have time for like deciphering what the music is or watching the cute little, you know, whatever they're like, tell me, like, tell me what it is. And so um, I think that that is just being really confident in who you are. And that's where it comes back for the kids is we have to make sure that they actually believe the things that they're saying that, that, that they put out there, you know, and that's one of the things that we try to talk about with, you know, in their writing or when they post stuff or whatever. But do you actually believe that? Like, would you, if someone came for you in the comments, you know, would it make you all of, like upset or, you know, would you be able to sit there and have a conversation right. with them because you're secure in your position? And so I think that's kind of what I've just tried to stick to is, is what I'm doing of value, you know, like, do I, you know, like, am I open to ideas about this? What is the worst thing that a person could possibly say? And then, you know, to me, that might be helpful. It might be something that like, I didn't think about, right. Or they could be right. Like we could both be right at the same time and not agree. Right. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure a hundred percent how we teach that specifically, well, but I, I think, do think, I think you modeling is the best start. Yeah. And just being like, this is what I'm, you know, who I am, this is what I'm confident in. And I would love to sit and talk to you about it some more. And if, if you're posting that kind of stuff, I think you'll find an audience because people want to hear the truth. Right. I mean, some of my best videos, I guess, were days when I just like popped it open right. and I was like, here's what I want to talk about right now. Cause this is what's really happening. And people responded to that. I mean, there was one where I was completely overwhelmed with my classroom being built. I don't know if you got to see that one. Oh. And people were like offering to drive into town to help me because they were like, this is this is real. I got a question for you as a struggling math student. Let's okay. see. Let's, let's give some practical teaching advice. So you have a kid in your classroom at the high school level. I'm sure you see this all the time who mm -hmm. struggles with math. Um, what, what are some of the things that you try to develop in that student to to help them see potential and is it okay if a student walks out of your class not knowing math as maybe I, i'm gonna put you on the spot there uh, that's to me that that is okay i understand right. that math is is not for everybody 
And I tell my kids that, like, I know math, not everybody's crazy like me and loves math, right? Like, um, and, you know, if somebody had to plunk me into like a history class, that would probably be a bad thing because right. that is not my strong suit. Right. Um, we all have our, our different things. Um, but for those, for those struggling math kids, for me, the biggest thing is to build their confidence right. because a lot of times that's what it is. And, you know, whether that be a positive word or, you know, putting a sticker on their test, you know, sometimes we, we do this, I shouldn't say sometimes, every month, part of our Renaissance team, we do an academic excellence board. And teachers can submit names of students, any student, doesn't matter. We don't ask why, just for their academic efforts. And I remember a particular student, her name was Catherine. Um, she was in my math class. It was the third time she had to take this math class. And school was not her favorite, um, but especially math. <laughs> and she, it was second semester and, you know, she was, we were getting along great. She was doing so well and she was passing this time and everything was going awesome. And her mom and her came to see me at Parent Teacher and we, in our school, we set up our tables in our cafeteria area in our upper lobby. And my table is always across from our academic excellence board. And all of the, it is every month, just so you know, the names that the teachers send in that they want to recognize for academics. So students, we have a theme and we put them on like a little shape. So I think that was March. So we had like a gold pot with the gold coins. So all the names were on these gold circles. And I was talking to her mom and her at parent teacher and the conversation was wrapping up. I said, oh, before you go, Catherine, make sure you check the board. Your name is over there. She's like, what? I said, yeah, your name is up there on that board. And her mouth dropped. You could not have seen a kid get up quicker out of that seat to run across the hall to look and find her name. And then her mom, of course, comes over and she finds her circle. She's standing there pointing at the circle. And her mom takes her picture with her cell phone. Like that just gave that girl so much confidence to get through to the end of the year. And it all like to us, we think sometimes it's just a piece of cardboard or a piece of cardstock or a piece of paper, but to those kids, sometimes it means so much more. So, okay, I love that. The, the other thing that I really connect with, and I'm so I'm so grateful you said this, is that about you using the analogy of history, because if you flip that, I would have mm. been a kid in the history class who would have loved it and hated the math class, right? And, right. and there was a lot of it um, where there's nothing, you, I hate saying this because, but it's true. There's nothing you could do to get me to like certain subjects. My focus is on really how do we focus on deep learning and technology can, you know, enhance that in many ways, or and sometimes it doesn't, it just kind of matters on the situation. So when you were actually thinking about when you brought me in, like what was some of the thinking behind that to like, why, like why at the time in Clover, we were talking about this, a lot of people, I talk a lot about change, a lot of your staff, actually um grew up there went away for a couple of years and taught there so you know maybe change is not their thing in some ways so what was some of the thinking behind bringing me in to, to talk to your staff in the to, first place? today so our thinking for bringing you in to and just to give it a little bit of context uh before the pandemic hit our district what we were trying to dip our toes into personalized learning and so we had a, a mini conference uh it wasn't anything quite like the scale of what we did this summer. Right. Um, but we had one because we were trying to dip our toes into it. And I will say, if I think back to those times before the that, we were really thinking about the what of personalized learning, like the flexible seating and that sort of thing, rather than the who of personalized learning. And so the who of personalized learning is, is the kids and then, of course, their teachers. And so um, one of the things I think, George, that resonates in all your books is, is that that whole heart piece and the building, the connections is what resonates there. And so we we wanted to give teachers the permission to understand, yes, we're, we're focused on academics and we're focused on high standards and, and we're not ever saying that we're not. But before you can get to those pieces, you really have to connect with the kids and get at their heart. And so one of the things that I think everyone sees coming out of the pandemic is um, it, you've really got to work a little bit harder in building those relationships with students and making that connection with them. And so we felt like we needed to give our teachers some permissions to think about building connection and make building heart um, with your students and, and just and loving loving your students and, and that's why we really thought about that so today this summer the thought was focus on the kids and and 
the whole ownership and agency with the around the kids. And that was the thinking for this summer. Now, we're going to move on and, and we're going to do uh, some more connections because we already have a, a date on the calendar for uh, the 2023 mini conference. Mm -hmm. But in bringing you in, we were really trying to connect with our teachers' hearts to mm -hmm. show them we appreciate you. We love you. We thank you for what you're doing to support children. And we're going to work on how do we build those connections with kids. And, and what, I, like, what I love about that is the idea is it, it's not stops at relationships. Cause I think a lot of people get kind of, you know, when we talk about that, it kind of starts with that. Some people get a kind of like a fluffy feeling, right? Like it's just yes. like, Oh, we love the kids. And I'm, yeah, of course we love the kids. Right. right. But it's actually, it is actually to build that relationship. It is way easier to challenge kids, to push them, to get them to right. live. Right. When, when they, yes. when, when you're pushing them and you know, they, they're, they're not as nervous to fall because they know someone has their back. Back. That's, that's part exactly of it too. Right. So, like, I'm actually, I think years ago, I wrote a blog post like saying, like, relationships are important, but they're also not enough, right? It's it's exactly. the beginning of that, um, and then kind of moving forward. And somebody actually said, you know, it was really nice to see George, um, actually there, learning from the other people. Like, I remember that specifically was one of the tweets, and I was like, I, I took great pride in that too, right? Because like I always talk about how I'm a learner. But yes. then for me just to show up, not listen to anybody, and then walk away after I'm done talking oh, yeah. isn't really embodying what I'm, I'm saying. Sure. Well, I think what we noticed too, George, I hope you don't mind me uh, sharing this, but I think one of the things that really struck our team is we were waiting to kind of get into that big kind of hall, you know, that, that big yeah. convention kind of space for the for the presentation was you were actually outside the door, you know, 15 minutes ahead of time greeting greeting those that are waiting to hear from you, right? Like greeting those that are waiting to be filled up. And I mean, just you being in their space, being at their level, and actually you held the door. So you like were walking on stage when all of us were seated. So again, I think that I've really tried to model that too, is when folks are coming to any professional learning or uh, how do, gosh, how we start, right? How do we show up, right? How do we ensure that they know like, it is, I am here for you, right? I'm here to learn from you as well. And I feed off of your energy and your questions. And I think that's what we felt from you and saw modeled by you on that, on that day as well. Well, that that's funny because that is something that I learned from my mom and dad who own a restaurant, right? Like yeah. how, like, and you, that, I think that's probably why I really connected to that word because yes. my parents literally, that was their, the way that they saw it was to, was to serve, right? right? Like, and if you think about it in a restaurant, that's probably yeah. the best word. And um, but people just had such a respect for them, such an admiration for them. And, uh, what they said was like really held close to people because of how they served and how they made people feel. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually could tell you straight up that I learned much more, um, from my mom and dad running a restaurant on how to lead in a school than I did in, in some educational, you know, sure. master's programs too, right. Just to yeah. see how they interacted with people. And that, that made a, a huge difference to me. Uh, I, I do want to ask you, and when you talk about this uh, terminology of being like, because I know vulnerable is a big um, aspect of when you talk about leadership and you talk about, you know, the, the need for courage. What do those things mean to you? And like, how do, how is that actually beneficial to leadership? Yeah. So I, I think one of um, some of my greatest pieces of learning and probably greatest um, kind of things that I admire most about leaders I, I'm, I'm really watching and, and observing in this time in education. So vulnerable to me means leaders that are willing to stand up and say, look, you know, we're trying to reimagine public education. We're trying to provide opportunities for a voice and choice for students outside of a just a number grade or a standardized test score. And as leaders, we may not have all the answers on how to get there, but we are vulnerable enough to stand up. I would say vulnerable and courageous enough to stand up alongside the team that we have gathered to say, we believe in this. I'm not exactly sure how to get there, but man, let's start, let's start taking the steps forward. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, another word that really, can, for me, I connect with vulnerability is this, this idea of humility. Um, humility is a really important character trait to me personally as a leader. And it really goes back to this idea of, of, of being a servant or really, really serving this idea that vulnerable leaders are willing to surround them, surround themselves with folks that are way more talented to them, that, uh, they're right. willing to not be the smartest person in the room, but they're willing to say like, man, let's come together. Let's collaborate on a shared vision and shared beliefs that we all have voice in and let's all add to ideas on how we're going to get there. Right. Um, and so really this idea of, I think there's a misnomer in leadership, George, honestly, that 
leaders have all the knowledge and all the skills already that we just possess these things, right? And then, gosh, what's the point of the team then, right? Mm -hmm. So when I speak of vulnerability and, and I think of about where we're heading in public education and what are the possibilities of where we can head, gosh, I just think about these courageous leaders who are standing up and saying, look, I don't have all the answers, but I need you on right. my team. We can shape this together.